Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This is going to be a game pickups video. Um, so yeah, these are all pickups that I've had for like a month and a half to like two months. Probably closer to like a month and a half. Uh, so yeah, these are all games uh, obviously I got before the whole you know, the world lockdown thing with a, a certain virus that's out there. Now, uh, obviously, like game shops and charter shops, now they're all shut now. You can still buy things on eBay, but I'm not like bothering at the moment. I need to catch up on games uh, that I've not played for anyway, but yeah, I'm probably not going to buy any games until after the whole certain virus thing's over. But um, yeah, we'll see. I might cave in and buy some on eBay. But anyway, guys, yeah, let's get on with uh, the game pickup, shall we? So, as you can probably see here. A decent stack, some PS4 games, a PS3 game, and the rest are PS2 games. Loads of PS2 games. So if I'm feeling retro, this has got me covered. Between that and all the other PS2 games I've not played through uh, before. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you don't hear any noises outside. There's like kids outside playing in one of the gardens. There's like dogs barking and stuff. So hopefully you don't hear that uh, too much. Um, I mean, you probably shouldn't, but... You know, camera picks up weird things. Anyway, guys, let's get on with the PS4 game, shall we? And um, I'm not going to mention this one too much because I have completed this game and I mentioned it on my games I recently completed. And I also did a uh, first impressions of this game, Dragon Quest Heroes 2. I can't remember whether it was £7.50 or £8.50 I paid for this game. It doesn't really matter because this game was worth every single penny. This game was an absolute blast, a lot of fun to play through. It's, uh, you know, it's the Dragon Quest characters in, uh, you know, like a, a Dynasty Warriors, like, gameplay style. And I like Dynasty Warriors gameplay, and, um, I couldn't really comment on Dragon Quest, because I haven't actually played a Dragon Quest game. This is the first Dragon Quest game I've played, and it's not even a, a proper Dragon Quest game, you know? But, um, yeah, like, if some of these characters appear in Dragon Quest, I'll be happy, because I, I liked every single one of these characters, you know? I don't... I don't know about having like favourites in that. I do like the the two main characters, you know, Teresa and Lorenza, or I think it's Lorenza. I think yeah, really, really, really like likable characters. I liked um, I liked uh, Angelo. He was quite a funny dude. Um, like I think it was Jessica. I thought she was quite funny. Like I say, all these characters are funny. Like I say, I hope they do make appearances in like some of the other Dragon Quest games. I know some of them do. So yeah, I'm quite happy with uh, you know with that. Cesar, he was. A bit of a badass, really liked him. Um, see, I think it was £8.50. Like I say, worth every penny, absolutely fantastic game, and uh, mint condition uh, disc as well. So, um, I can't remember, it was like 20 hours, I want to say, I, I put into that game before I completed it. Amazing stuff, like a really good game, definitely a game I would you know, play for again. I need to seek out the, the first game, you know, as well. And I may or may not have another Dragon Quest game, but we'll see. Uh, and the last PS4 game was a game I got for three pound, and a lot of people were really digging the single player. And it's not a, a, a massive like series that I'm into as far as like FPS games go. So it's kind of like, hmm, people are actually praising the campaign. That's that's interesting. Battlefield One. No. I don't really get why people were praising uh, like praising this campaign. It's a beautiful looking game. I mean, it's, I guess the dialogue and stuff is good. Oh, it's so boring though. It is so slow. It's so boring to play. There's like so many vehicle missions. It's I got sick of driving tanks. I got sick of blowing flying planes. Oh my god, I couldn't stand this game. Like I do not like this game. It's like a three or four long campaign, and it felt a lot longer than that, so... Yeah, not good, in my opinion. Don't like Battlefield 1. I can't comment on on uh, the multiplayer, because I don't have PlayStation Plus, and I'm not really a multiplayer fan anyway, so... Yeah, that was uh, £3, so... Yeah, it was, it was cheap, but... Uh, couldn't play for it again. Really, really couldn't. Again, that's discs, mint condition as well. Just a really dull, boring, like, single player. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, two kilo, it's like four different characters you play as, and, like I said, the characters and dialogue and that were good, but the gameplay is boring as hell. Really boring stuff. So, yeah, I can't recommend it. 
And uh, the single PlayStation 3 game I got, which I got for, I think it was £2.50 on eBay. Again, before the whole lockdown thing. Uh, Time Crisis Raging, or Raisin Storm. I should say it's Raisin, not Raging. See, so, yeah, this has uh, Raisin Storm, <clears throat> uh, Time Crisis 4, and uh, Dead Storm Pirates on one disc. Yeah, three games in one. And I think this game might be better with the position move, which I don't have, but you can play it with the controller. See, it comes complete. I think the disc was pretty much mint. Uh, yeah, mint condition, guys. Yeah, I, I don't really like this game too much. Like I said, I do think it might be better with the move controller. But um, the story mode is like an F, like a first-person shooter. Right? You walk around, which is just... Weird for Time Crisis, because Time Crisis is supposed to be like an unreal, like, arcade-style shooter. So, uh, yeah, this game, story mode, I was just like an FPS. You move around and stuff, and you get to cover in, like, the most awkward way possible. You have to, like, tilt the controller up or something to take cover. What? Unheard of. Absolutely unheard of. That was so, like, awkward. Like, I, I couldn't stand that. I thought that was absolutely terrible. Um, so after that I just went on to the arcade mode which just plays like our you know, time crisis. And we're back. See? Again, can't make a video without getting interrupted. Every single time. Uh, very demotivating, right? Uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about time crisis. Um, yeah, the arcade mode just plays like any other time crisis game where you know, the character moves around by himself and you just like shoot people. Uh, that's probably the best mode. So, um... Yeah, I'm not very good at Time Crisis to be honest, I think I'm, I'm pretty rubbish at them. Either that or the games are just quite hard and take a bit of practice. But um, yeah, this one uh, I'm not too into. Uh, I will give it another shot. Because um, that Dead Storm Pirates looks pretty good with like skeleton like pirates and that. That looks pretty uh, interesting, so I might give that a shot. It's maybe more like a, a halloween -y kind of like version, pirate -y kind of. I don't want to know, but that looks uh, somewhat interesting, so I might give that a shot, but, yeah, so far, not too impressed, but, yeah, I might give it another shot. Um, so, yeah, we'll go with the PS2 games now, so most of these are charity shop pickups, but a few I did get from a, you know, second-hand shop, so, uh, yeah, we'll start off with this one, let's get this piece of garbage out of the way, for uh, a pound I got this, a charity shop, The Shadow of Zorro. Oh yeah, this game. So, um, this comes complete. Very, meh, average looking disc, I guess. Let's see. Eh, there's quite a few scratches on that. Not too bad, but... Yeah, this game's garbage, it's... Like, it's really dark. Like, I had my TV on, like, the brightest setting, but it's still very, very dark. Um, so you play Zorro, you're, like, walking around. It's not a very good-looking game at all. It's aged, like, terribly. Maybe even when it came out, it probably didn't look that great. It's pretty, uh, a crappy-looking game there. And you get into, like, combat and stuff, and you have to, like, press, like, a set, like, buttons, like, a certain order and stuff. You know, like, square, triangle, circle, and square again or something like that, you know, just like, it seems to be like a random, like, uh, you know, button, button press and uh, sequence you have to press, it's, oh, it's so boring, like, it's really, really dull, in fact, it's really what the whole game's going to be like, oh my god, yeah, like, I, I don't know, I think this game's really, really bad, like, I only played it for about 20 minutes and I just couldn't stomach it, it was just so boring, like, and it looks so dark as well, <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I don't like this game. I think this game's pretty damn awful, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah. Don't recommend it, guys. It's pretty bad. Uh, we'll get the charity shop ones out of the way first, I guess. Um, see, I actually got the next four games. I got these all at the same time. From, uh, I think it was Bark. The, like, a, a dog that, like, like, helps, like... Like, animals find a home, you know, for, like, homeless cats and dogs and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, went in and uh, seen a whole bunch of PS2 games. Most of the games I've already got, but uh, these ones I hadn't. So uh, yeah, I decided to pick these up for a pound each. So the first one we've got is um, something I've been always wanting to try out, but never really got round to getting it. And this is also available on the PS3. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on the PS4, it might be. But it's definitely on the PS3. Um, but yeah, i got the PS2 version now for a pound. Zone of the Enders. Yeah, definitely one I was looking to check out. This is uh, Konami. This is the same people that did uh, Metal Gear Solid. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be very similar as far as, like, there's going to be loads and loads of cutscenes and stuff, but that's yeah, kind of just, uh, the way these kind of games are, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I think it could tell, like, a, an interesting story. See, comes complete. I think this disc was really, really good, like, yeah, it's hard, it's hard with any marks and that, that's fantastic, really good stuff. Um, so yeah, when I, I was like, obviously I try these games out when I first get them just to make sure they work and stuff. Um, I skipped like the cutscenes, I listened to them for a little while, but, you know, once I decide to like, play for this game like normal, I will watch all the cutscenes of course, but I just wanted to test the game out, I just wanted to see what it was all about, so I skipped most of the cutscenes. Um, but the dialogue did seem good from what I did listen to it, and uh, the gameplay will take a bit of getting used to. I thought the camera was a little bit weird at times, you're like flying around in a mech, and you can shoot things from a distance, or you can go close and attack things with a sword. Um, yeah, a very interesting looking game, good soundtrack. Um, like I say, this is going to take a little bit of getting used to it. seems to have like an RPG system, because I was fighting enemies that are like level 2 and stuff, so, um, and I was only level 1. Uh, for the time I played the game, so yeah, you seem to have like a level up system, like an RPG. Some, you know, I think that's a, a pretty damn interesting uh, thing to have. So yeah, looking forward to giving this one a try. I think this one could be pretty fun. I know it was the second game as well, which apparently was even better. So yeah, like a, a 3D mech uh, action game slash RPG, I guess, with uh, hopefully a good story, you know. So yeah, really like. Uh, Really quite a point of it so far. Uh, next one I got is one I'm not too sure on. Um, my opinion, probably the least favourite of the ones that I got at that particular time. Um, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which apparently goes for about ten pound on eBay, which is absolutely insane. I had absolutely no idea for it. It'll probably go for maybe four or five pound or something, but no, nah, it goes for like ten pound. Uh, the last time I checked. And if you know me, I'm not massive into Mortal Kombat. I did like, um, from what I played in Mortal Kombat 10 on the PS4, I thought that was good. I do like the Mortal Kombat 9 Complete Edition for the PS3. Uh, I do think they're good games. It's not games I can play for a long time. Like I say, I'm more of a, a Tekken, Soul Calibur, or Dead or Alive kind of person. Um, I don't even like Street Fighter, to be honest, very much either. So, let's see this comes complete. The only thing I've got a great with this is I, I'll show you guys I don't think you'll be able to see but like the inside ring there it's a little bit it's got a little bit cracked right around the, the side again you'll probably not see that but yeah it's like a few little cracks again they don't like obviously they don't affect the data but if the cracks get bigger it might start to you know seep into the data there so that's like the only thing that's wrong with uh, the disc Apart from that, it's it's pretty decent. Like a few like my, like minor marks, but overall not too bad at all. Just that little crack. It's I don't know, may get bigger over time, but yeah, it'll do for now. Um, so you can actually create your own uh, character in this. I think this is the uh, to my knowledge only Mortal Kombat game you can actually create your own character. That is create with a K, of course. Yeah, you can you create your own character, um, which I didn't actually try, um, but apparently from what I've heard it's actually a pretty decent, like, in-depth system. You can actually create some pretty damn interesting characters, so, yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's definitely a, a cool feature. I'm surprised I haven't added that to like, the newer Mortal Kombat games, like, a, an, you know, a create character feature. Uh, I think most games do. Uh, nowadays, you know, games like Soul Calibur and that have, have that feature. I don't know if Tekken has it. I think Tekken, you can only, like, change your, like, attire for your characters and stuff. I don't think you can actually create your own character like you can in, you know, Soul Calibur. 
But yeah, it, it was all right. Again, I'm not that into it. It's, it's got a good roster. I think it's like... It's got 60 plus characters. So that's really good. Big, strong roster. For, uh, you know, for your Mortal Kombat fans. But yeah, it just... It feels... All right, just I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't play it for very long, but um, yeah, I pound. Thought it was a good price. Just not that into Mortal Kombat. Uh, next one is a one that I've, I've I'm sure I've seen the cover before, but I knew like very little of it, and that is a Gunbird Special Edition. Again for a pound. So this is an explosive software. Uh, who I think make like some other games like is it the four racing games they make? Could be wrong, but they do make a lot of like I think they make a lot of like racing games and stuff. Just like a, an arcade shooter, you can see here like a um, top-down shooter. I get not not top-down shooter. Um, I don't know what do you call it. I can't actually think in a moment. It's it's very like Galaga kind of like yeah. If you played Galaga. So very similar to that. So here comes my boy. I think this is, yeah, it's one of those uh, blue discs or purple discs. Look, everybody's favourite discs. So you can probably tell with these, there's not a lot of content on the disc. That's usually the case with the, the purple discs, you know. But yeah, this seems pretty good. It's actually got two games in one, Gunbird 1 and Gunbird 2. I have no idea what Gunbird was on. I'm guessing it might have been on like the arcades or something, but yeah, two games in one seems pretty good. Like graphical wise, like the environments and that seem really, really cool. Uh, really, really cool. If you can probably see, they're quite nice. It's very uh, fast paced. Uh, probably gets quite difficult, but I think you get a lot of credits. You get like three lives, and then when you lose those lives, you can just like start again. Um, you know, continue from you know where you died, but you obviously think it resets your score or something. So. I like that, it means I don't have to worry about getting game overs and stuff. So I'm not very good at like these kind of shooting games, but I do enjoy them. They're just a little bit tough, but yeah, Gunbird Special Edition seems pretty fun. And on that particular day, this for me was the cream of the crop. Uh, this was the one I was most happy to get and the one that I was most excited about playing. And now that I've got this game, like I've got I've had thoughts of like starting it but I know it's one of those games that I have like a lot of difficulty like starting just for the fact that I know how long these games are. It's an RPG, you know. You know, usually when I like, want to play an RPG, I usually end up going for like Digimon or something. You know, Digimon Story or Digimon World or Digimon World Next Order, because those are games that um, you know I I know quite well. Games that I'm you know pretty confident playing. I know they're long, but not as long as like a you know, obviously a fresh. RPG. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's get over it, shall we? It's uh, Dragon Quest The Journey of the Cursed King. Dragon Quest 8, apparently. Yes, final guys, Dragon Quest. This just, this just came at a perfect time after obviously picking up and playing this. This just this had to come at just like that perfect time. Uh, it's pretty damn funny to be honest, because I have been looking out for this uh, for a while. Uh, it just seemed to come up at a very, very convenient time. So, you can see a pound. Well, I think on eBay you're probably looking at maybe seven or eight pounds for this game, maybe even more. Because uh, RPGs usually will tend to, you know, go for more. It's, this has been around a bit. Obviously, it was in the chart shop, but I bought it. It's been in CEX, but those of things for four pounds in CEX. So, that seems like a decent price, to be fair. I'll credit the CEX. So, um,. Yeah, look at the back, like, it looks really, really beautiful, like, I'd really like the art style of this game. It just seems really, really cool, very colourful, uh, soundtrack's really, really catchy. Enemy designs, character designs all seem really, really good. Good voice acting, very entertaining, you know, British sounding voice acting. So, um, he comes complete. Uh, obviously, it's the, the platinum version, of course, but, again, doesn't matter to me. I'm just happy to, you know, have the game, you know. Disc-wise, again, pretty damn good. Like, very, very few scratches. So, yeah, I'm going to guess it's like a woman 50-hour game or something. Because, you know, it's a, I'm guessing it's going to be a very long RPG. But, 
But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to, you know, playing this one, you know. Hopefully I can really get into the characters and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, really enjoy the world and, uh, you know, the gameplay and the soundtrack and stuff. So yeah, Dragon Quest VIII, absolutely a uh, fantastic looking game, you know. Just the thought of starting an RPG, it's, it's a lengthy process, guys. Uh, next are all from a game shop. And uh, these are, this one's only 50 pence, this one, Freedom Fighters. And the one that drew me to this, Makers of the Hitman 2. Hitman 2 wasn't one of my favourite games, but I do like the Hitman games overall, uh, to be fair. Like Blood Money and uh, Contracts and Absolution, I really like you know, all those Hitman games. And uh, 2 for me didn't age too well. Is it Silent Assassin, I think it was called? It didn't really age too well for me. Um, but yeah, I was looking forward to trying this. It seemed quite interesting, like a you know, pretty action-packed shooting game. For a 50p. Yeah, this one's quite bad with Scratch, though. I will, uh, I'll say that. It is quite bad. It comes complete. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of marks on that. So uh, when I booted this up, uh, I got to the main menu and like the music like stopped on the main menu and it like made this like really loud like buzzing noise like it's really weird like a, a sound glitch or something. So uh, I took it out and my PlayStation 2 was quite, you know, it was getting quite loud. So I was having trouble reading the disc with those things. So I took it out, gave it a wipe, and there was no audio issue. Uh, the music didn't glitch out again. But uh, the PS2 does sound quite loud when this is in, so I'm kind of a bit worried to play this in case it damages my laser. So, um, yeah, it was definitely struggling. So, but from what I played of it, I played it for maybe like 10 minutes. Like I said, I didn't want to play it too long just in case it damaged the console. But uh, yeah, it seemed really good. It had a lot of humour to it. Uh, interesting characters, fun, you know, shooting. It feels very fast paced, kind of like arcade uh, style shooting. So, uh, yeah, definitely one I want to get, but I'll probably just have to like, buy a new disc. Because um, you can probably get a disc for, like, £2 or something on eBay, probably. So, disc only, you know. So, but, yeah, Freedom Fighters. Apparently, it's, a lot of people really like this game. And, um, from what I played, it seemed decent. I just didn't want to damage my console, you know. Uh, maybe it wouldn't damage it. Maybe it was just having problems reading it. I don't know. I'm, I'm very paranoid about that kind of thing. I don't want to damage my console. Because, you know. Buying a new disc is going to be a lot cheaper than buying a new console, you know. Um, so your next game I got was um, one I, I'm sure I've like seen this before. Again, I've just known like nothing about this game. And it is uh, Forgotten Realms Demon Stone. Yeah, Atari game. Good old Atari. And that was a pound, that one. See it there. So yeah, very, like, knew very little. The only thing that really drew me to it was the fact that it's Atari. Atari are usually pretty decent, and it looked pretty interesting from the back. And, uh, yeah, from what I put of it, it seemed a little bit like Lord of the Rings, in a way, where you're, like, fighting, like, orcs and things. I mean, look at it. The guys look like they could be in Lord of the Rings, to be fair. See, it comes complete. And... Yeah, very, very good condition disc. Looks like that's harder than played on, so that's good. So yeah, you like play as uh, three different characters here. Uh, they've all got like different sets of skills. I think there's, one's a mage, one's a fighter, and let's see what we've got here. A fighter, a sorcerer, and a rogue. Um, so yeah, you can actually, uh, you know, all these three characters are together at one point, so you can like switch between uh, characters on the fly. And, uh, yeah, basically take advantage of all their different skills. Uh, it starts off very basic. You've only got, like, a couple of different combos, so that could get very repetitive. But uh, I noticed when I completed the first level, there was, like, a, a skill tree thing. So it seems that you can level up and, you know, get new skills. So, um, yeah, I mean, it seems okay. Like, see, the characters themselves seem very likeable. It was, like, you know, they're well voice acted, uh, had a lot of humour to them as well, uh, humorous characters, you know. It seemed that don't very, you know, they don't get along very well, but I'm sure as the game goes on, they start to, you know, get on better, obviously become friends, probably. 
as most of these things usually, you know, go. But, um, yeah, I think it could be decent. Like I say, it's just a little bit repetitive at the beginning, but as you get into it, it may, you know, start to get better. It may have an interesting story, interesting characters. And, um, yeah, it could be an alright game, you know? So, yeah, kind of like a, a lower-budget version of Lord of the Rings, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. But it seemed okay. Definitely, um... Something I'd consider going back to, you know. And the last one is a non-RPG Final Fantasy game. Well, I guess it has some RPG elements, maybe. But it's uh, Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. Very, very interesting stuff, yeah, this game. Like I say, this is another one that I've been interested in for a while. Just, uh, I never really saw it for a decent price. It was always like seven or eight pounds, you know. So, um, I've seen this one for four. So I thought I would uh, give it a shot, you know. So I think you play as Vincent, I think it was. Vincent Valentine. Who I know nothing about. He might, I don't think he's in Final Fantasy VII, but I could be wrong. But he does look straight out of Final Fantasy. He looks like a cool dude. I'll give him that. You know, when I have Final Fantasy looking guy, long hair, fancy coat, that's your Final Fantasy dudes, isn't it? So here comes complete. I think this disc was a little bit scratched, like... Yeah, it's got some scratches, again, I don't think it's, they're too bad though. I don't think it's anything that should like, stop gameplay, we didn't like... My mate, my, it didn't make my position too loud or anything, so that was cool. Um, so this is still like an RPG, it's like a, a third person shooter, which is very, very interesting. Uh, you go around in third person just like shooting the hell out of enemies, you know, protecting people and stuff. And I'm guessing along the way you meet like people like Tifa and Cloud and Barrett, because they're all on the back here, you know. Uh, Yuffie, of course, uh, Sid. Um, I'm not the biggest like, Final Fantasy VII fan. I thought it was a good game, but I got lost in Final Fantasy VII. So, but I do think the characters were very memorable, like design-wise and things. I thought they did have a, a good look. Is that Cave Sif? Or Cat? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it could be Cave Sif. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It seems like an interesting game. Uh, I'll probably have good dialogue as well, like Final Fantasy games usually have. Um, so yeah, looking forward to, you know, getting into this one. It's probably going to be really long, very long third-person shooter, but, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure it'll have interesting RPG elements where you can, like, level up and wear new moves and, like, have, like, new guns and things, but, yeah, seems cool. So anyway, guys, yeah, that is it for my game pickups. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think of any of these games. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you've been uh, playing recently during these uh, tough times, you know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Voice died. But, yeah, guys, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.